And welcome into a Wednesday edition of Philly Voice Sports Bets. Matt Cherico, Harry Mays, and Aton Shander oh, yeah. with you. Sure. Yes, and it is the official start, for me at least, Aton, of the PGA Tour season. Starts today. And, uh, we, I, you know, I'm going to tell you what we did in golf uh, this week for the Farmers. But we're going to start in football because there's line movements in both of these situations. <laughs> guys and it's pretty it's pretty interesting to see what has happened on the side in Kansas City where the Chiefs are now a one point underdog at home to the Cincinnati Bengals and Joe Burrow and uh, you know this is all around the the mystery of how severely hurt is Patrick Mahomes and his ankle his high ankle sprain and then we had a total uh the total has moved sh- you know just small it went up one point in the Eagles Niners game from 45 and a half to 46 and a half. And it went down a half a point in Kansas City, 47 and a half to 47. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. You know what? You know what I thought? Okay. So clearly this line moved through zero because Patrick Mahomes is hurt. But we all knew Patrick Mahomes right. was hurt, right? So when the line opened up, it was a little off because we all had a sense that Patrick Mahomes was banged up. What what I'm a little hesitant to do, guys, is say like, "Oh, Mahomes isn't playing," or "This right. is some draft." Because then that I mean, come on, you got that line would be at three, if not three and a half by now, because Sharps would slam the shit out of it. Now they've hit it, but I, I mean, it it's still like, come on, it's only yeah. at one right now. Now, granted, yeah. it's Wednesday, but do you guys see it moving to three? I don't think I do. I mean, I don't unless he, you know, during his rehab, something goes wrong, you know, and it's like, you know, he re-injures it or whatever. I actually yeah. think he's going to be not fine. He's not going to be 100%, but I think he's going to be pretty good to go. Yeah. Or we'll be, we'll be out there seeing him on their first possession saying, boy, that ankle looks pretty good. I agree. Yeah. I agree entirely. Yeah. But you just... The, um, like imagining Patrick Mahomes as an underdog in this game yeah. just doesn't seem like a good scenario for the Bengals. Like I anybody know. doubting Patrick Mahomes, like we're <laughs> doubting this guy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like we've seen him make throws even off of his feet entirely. So, right. I mean, he doesn't need that back leg to plant and throw. You know, he no. uh, has a baseball background. He has the arm strength. I don't think it's going to affect him as much as people think or that this line is showing. So, I definitely think uh, this is the time if you're going to hop on Kansas City, you know, hop yeah. on it now. Now, you know, so, I took took him up. Excuse me, I took him up go, to go. seven and a half. You know, there one you plus six and a half is seven and a half. Gets you through seven, gets you through six four and all those other numbers <laughs> and San Francisco I took from two and a half up to nine there you go so yeah. th- this is the beauty of what's happened remember when we opened up on Monday I told you that I hit both dogs as far as a six and a half point teaser so right. we moved Cincinnati and San Francisco each past eight and now you have the same exact now it's not a full foolproof middle But if San Francisco covers that teaser, both sides of this game, because you've now can, like you said, Harry, you can tease Kansas City now up as the dog. And if you tease Cincinnati on Monday, guess what? You've got both sides teased up through at least plus seven and a half. Yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, that is just, that's a, that's a rare occurrence, especially in a game of this magnitude. Just need the Niners here to cover. Right, right. (laughs) (laughs) Now, are you interested at all, guys, in the totals of any of these games? I mean, is this a situation where, you know, it's it's the biggest playoff game of the year for both of these, uh, you know, for all four of these teams? Coaches tend to get a little conservative, especially in the second half of games like this, and, and where they're just like, you know what, field position means more to me than trying to risk something here on third and eight. Uh, you know, let, let's punt the football or, you know, let's kick a field goal. Like we, a lot of these cavalier, let's go for it on fourth down football coaches. They come back down. It sh- they get shrinkage in a game like this. No, I agree. I think if there's one game that I'm looking at the under in, I think it's the Eagles Niners game. And that's just because these are the best defenses that both of these teams have faced so far this season. You know, Brock Purdy has not seen anything like this Eagles defense. I mean, the Cowboys was the best that he's seen so far in his professional career. And the Eagles is head and shoulders above that Cowboys defense. So, and then on the other side of things with the Eagles, I just think this 49ers defense is so 
good in the front side. I mean, Nick yeah. Bosa, obviously, and then you have Fred Warner, probably oh, the best linebacker. He's the best in the linebacker league. in football, if you ask me. I mean, me. he was yeah. going stride for stride with C.D. Lamb this past weekend. I, that was just incredible to me. That was on the he came from the line of scrimmage. Like I don't, I've never seen a linebacker yeah. that fast, and I do think that the linebacker, you know, situation in the league is somewhat uh, kind of under what it's been in the past you know we don't see those types of superstars at that position right now but fred warner is easily easily the best that we've seen in the past i'd say like three four years so well, hold on guys my kid just destroyed everything in my house so, oh, so keep talking here we go we, we have this is live uh youtube folks this is what happens <laughs> so teddy stacks must be just apoplectic at the line movement in that I, I wish I could tell game. you. Can, you. can you see that down there? Yes, I can. He just pulled off a shit ton of glass. Like, what? how many years of bad luck do you get for breaking glass? Seven? Nerd? <laughs> I have no idea. We're fucked in this house right now after all the glass uh -oh. he just broke. Watch out with the bets now. See, you're screwed. He, I think Teddy Stacks, just, he just mushed you uh, for every pick that you're going to make on this show today. Oh my goodness! Okay. He just destroyed Christmas presents. Like he, oh. he, you know, somebody, my wife's family gave us this really nice bowl. He's he's a terror, a, an absolute. A he's, a monster. he's a menace. Unbelievable! All right, I'm sorry. So All right. now, um, the, the, the total, yeah, go ahead. Harris. Now, did you know? Do you guys aware of this? That the the touchdown that the Niners scored actually shouldn't have counted. Uh, which one? The 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 one the, the kill one, just the, the one. one so the I actually, made I've the, seen that. the play they made the kittle what was should that? not have counted and that led to excuse the me pass? I think I said the touchdown. that I've led to that. the touchdown that San Francisco scored to win the game the play kittle was like not even a, the third the third option on that on that play and he was not covered up by the on the line of scrimmage. So yeah. it should have been either uh, an illegal man downfield, an illegal touching, or an illegal formation. You could have thrown any wow. of three penalty flags on it. Go back and watch it. Ice check is is on the playing tight end, and Kittle is actually like a left tackle, and he's not covered up. The only thing that I saw from the other side of that was that people were arguing there were already five other guys on the line. So mm -hmm. Kittle is actually allowed to go out and catch a pass if he needs to. Yeah, but nobody covered him up on that side. In other words, Debo was back off the line of scrimmage, and yeah. so was Juszczyk. So you got to have somebody covered up. Yeah. What the man, did. Wait, did any of the – what game was – what channel was this on? This was on Fox, right? It was uh, – yes. So was it Blandino? Like, did nobody say anything? Uh, I, don't, no, I, don't I don't remember I, anything I didn't happening. hear anything until Twitter, actually, after the game. Yeah, yeah. That's insane, isn't it? it? That it like is, the broadcast didn't catch it, the, the referees didn't catch it, or even the referee like official who's there to talk about the refs didn't catch it. Yeah, I you know to be to give credit, I actually heard Boomer Esiason talking about it, and uh, I forget uh, what what referee they use, but he actually discussed it with the referee that yet that they use uh, in the last day or two, and said, yeah, that that was a penalty. There's no way that play should have happened. Wow, wow, so that's huge. Yeah, I mean, that that was a deciding factor. Yeah, you know, game. Shanahan is sharp. I mean, Shanahan probably knew that his, he had a bad formation, that. but we're going to get away with it. Now, if you're the Eagles, you got to make make sure that, you, and they probably have already done this, in the ear of the official saying, look, we're Absolutely. looking for this. And that Absolutely. could have been even a ploy by Shanahan just to give them, you know, something else to study yeah. in the film room. Yeah, you know? remember like what they... Bel Belichick did something similar when they played the Ravens in the playoffs years ago, where they've since outlawed the he was yeah, doing yeah, some yeah. illegal formation. Yeah. And and the rule book didn't stipulate, but it was a it was illegal and right. they got away with it. it. It wasn't illegal, but it wasn't legal, right? right. Like and, and they got away with that gray area. Gray area. Uh, yeah, because Belichick has that guy that he basically he's right. like an, an NFL accountant who yes. just combs through the rule book and tells him what he can or can't do. Right. Yeah, I remember that. Harbaugh was pissed uh -huh. off after yep. that shit. Yep. And then they changed it, I think, as a result of that, I right? Think, I think they did. So watch oh out my. for this. This is a developing um, situation. <laughs> Um, I I did see Miles Sanders, by the way. It was at 62 and a half last time I checked. I think he's gone under this six of his last eight. Mm. You know that Jalen Hurts is back now. He's probably going to have to run a little more 
than he did yeah. against the Giants. Look, Kenny Gainwell, Boston Scott, these guys are involved in the offense. And then there's a chance and possibility, fellas, that the Eagles are playing from behind against yeah, the, this Niners team. So, and, and, Yeah, you're absolutely right. And running is not going to be as easy as it was against the Giants. No. Remember, they uh, ran all over them a couple yep. of weeks ago, too. I'm inclined to go under on that. It's yeah. early in the week, but I, I think it may drop, to be honest with you. Yeah, we'll definitely dive in more on the player prop side on Friday. Uh, but that's a good one to, you know, let, let's come back to that. Definitely yeah. on Friday. Uh, what about, uh, Andy, well, let, let's go back. Are we done with the football for now? Or we, Yeah, that's fine. Okay, because we got to go back to Monday night. Uh, we, I rolled out the college basketball play. Baylor, mm -hmm. money line, bang, in a mm -hmm. very entertaining game. Uh, Kansas has now lost three games straight. Amazing. They got, they've got Kentucky coming up on the weekend, yep. and yep. both of those teams need a win. We also, I tailed you, Aton, on the Penn Quakers, minus 16 and a half. It went down to 15 and a half, I think, before tip, but they covered that easily, and Hartford was in the 50s, like he we said. Total. Yes, baby. <laughs> That's right. So we, we just like to pat ourselves on the back every once in a while. I've got another college basketball play tonight, and I've also got a play in hockey. Oh, well, now you're t speaking my language here, all right? So uh, I know Cherico's got some stuff in the NBA. Let me throw one college play out. I don't trust Wake on the road unless they're playing the College of the Blind in Charleston. Okay. And they're not playing them tonight. They're playing Pitt. And I think a lot of people have lost betting Pitt because they've shorted them and not really taken them seriously enough. I, this is a great spot for Pitt at two and a half. So I'll lay that two and a half. Uh, and then the only play I took the Icelanders, even money. Oh, yeah, like the, the Islanders, Islanders tonight. Right, the ice, the Iceland. You here, me there, me Iceland. There. All right, so uh, that's the only two, and then uh, I'll, I'll see what I'll see what Cherico has in the NBA. What you got? All right. All right, NBA, uh, we were able to cash out the other day on Vooch and his rebounds. I mean, the guy put up 17 that night. Beautiful. I, I think yeah. he had that in the first half, didn't he? Yeah, yep. I think he had 11 total, right at half. Right. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like 11 and a half, so I, we were sitting pretty. Uh, the DeJounte Murray line was 27 and a half, and he ended up with 20 points and seven assists. You hate to see it. Two of seven from three. All the volume in the world, you know, to his name, just unable to hit one more point or even, you know, assist for us. Uh, so... But tonight we're going back. Bradley Beal over 23 and a half points. Uh, I really like the position he is in to be scoring a lot tonight, going up against the Houston Rockets. Uh, on the other side of the ball, not a lot of defense from Jalen Green or KPJ. So I really like that one. And Bradley Beal, you know, 23 and a half seems like a relatively low line for somebody that's a leading scorer on his team. And for somebody that if they want to see any success, any victory, they need him to put buckets up. So I like that one a lot. And then I'm going to take Kyrie Irving uh, going against the Sixers tonight over over 41 and a half points, rebounds, wow. and assists. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So I think his you know, point total is at 29 and a half. Man. Yeah, Last I saw. Kind of crazy because he's. Been yeah. Up, uh, I you know, thought you were going to go under his point total, but I, I mean, look, the PRA is a good way around not having to go over one specific stat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think 41 and a half. He's gonna have to facilitate, right? Like yeah, now yeah, that Kevin absolutely. Durant's out, like he's gonna have yep. to put up, you know, those types of point guard numbers. And at the end of the day, he is still is the leading scorer on that team. So I think against a team like the Sixers, he's gonna be matching up against James Harden. I don't know if you guys remember last week what Kyrie actually said about Harden. They asked uh, you know, Kyrie what he thought the difference was between this year and last year in terms of Brooklyn and their injuries. And he said, Well, this year we don't have a guy who's half in the locker room. So Ooh. that was, yeah, but that's don't a they shot. Don't with Ben Simmons? They, they do. They, and yeah. even Kevin Durant is kind of half in the locker. <laughs> right. So I don't really know where he was going with that, but it's a personal vendetta tonight. So I think Kyrie's going to come out uh, hooping for sure. Wow. All right, Harry, real quick, before you go and back to college in the NHL, there was one NBA play I wanted to add in, and it was uh, Cherico's PRA play that reminded me. Okay. Look, I think this number is low. I don't think it's like, oh, my God, this is super low, but – it's one of these where he could not hit it or he could hit it with his points alone. I'm going to go over 27 and a half PRA. 27 and a half PRA for Clay Thompson tonight. PRA play. Love it. All right. Uh, college basketball. The Houston Cougars went down to my Temple Owls last weekend. We all know that. But they now go on the road. This is their first game since losing that 
that big one to Temple at home, and Kelvin Sampson was looking for a yeah. reason to yep. get into his team's ass, and they gave it to him. And he's been in their ass all week, and they're going to Orlando to take on UCF, laying 10 and a half. I am taking the Cougars for a bounce back beatdown of UCF on the road in the American. That's where we start. Then we go to hockey. All yep. right. I haven't made a hockey play in years. But I was to- I was on Vancouver the other oh, night, yeah, yeah. Their, their first game back with Rick Tockett at the helm, and I figured they were going to take advantage of a putrid Blackhawks team. They did. They won the game 5-2 to two and easily covered, uh, easily won the money line, the puck line, whatever you wanted to do there with that. Now they go on the road to the Kraken, okay? Not a big road trip, but they're going to Seattle, who has been laying in wait since Saturday. Saturday. The long they, time off, lost, man. They've lost three of the four, their last four. They games. were hot too. They were hot. Right, but now they've had a couple of days yep. off, a couple of days to work on some things in practice, and in comes Vancouver. Uh, they, they played four games in six days, did the Kraken, and they lost three of those four. Now they've had some time off. I am taking the Kraken minus 165. Wow, you're the- take, you're fading the new coach? I am you're fading, fading the Rick? new coach in game two. Okay, okay. The Kraken. Yes, we are cracking with the Kraken. I like Unbelievable. It. I don't think Unbelievable. Jericho doesn't like it. He says I he love likes it, man. It, I love I, it. I'm trying to no, I'm trying doesn't. to get into hockey and I just I can't find like a way to just dive okay. in. You know, there's I'll so give much. you one. Yeah. I'll give you one here. The the easiest way to do that is shots on goal. And you can treat shots on goal like three pointers in the NBA. You can build ladders and you can take it and approach it the same way as a baseline minus 120, 130 to get your money back. And then you can build off of that. That's, that's, it's been profitable if you target the right guys. And it's, you know, just looking the same way you build three pointers volume. Yeah. You just want shot volume. Uh, but it's also, it also doesn't require you to dive deeper into the game, like, you know, angling a first period play or something along those lines. Gotcha. So uh, shots on goal, like there's a guy nurse tonight, right? Um, if I, nurse. No, I, I, that's that's who you're thinking of. But you right. have to Google him, right? Um, I believe he's on, is it the, he's in the Edmonton game, okay. right? So I went over two and a half shots on goal for him. And and uh, and later in the day, you'll get an opportunity on FanDuel to ladder four plus, five plus. Yeah. So I'll do a little ladder with don't call me Nick Nurse. Gotcha. <laughs> Darnell. Darnell Nurse. Darnell yeah, Nurse. Darnell okay. Nurse. Now in the golf, I took Jason Day in my one and done. Uh, Aton's in that pool as well. I'm not sure what he did. I also took him in a top 20 at plus 115. Yep. I took Keegan Bradley in a top 20 at plus 220. Uh uh, he's had two top fives at Torrey Pines. He's actually won in the fall. Uh, actually, also a fifth at Sanderson Farms, playing good golf right now. And Wyndham Clark, I took in a top 20 at plus 250. Hits it a mile, and you got to hit it a mile to win at Torrey Pines. Yep. Yep. I love it, man. Uh, I, I think you you got a good, especially on your approach shot. These guys on the south course are going to see shots from 200 out on some mm-hmm. thin, you know, some some tiny spot some tiny greens to land especially the difference from the north right so i I like that approach at all uh i am on you with day i have to see i think i took day in my one and done too i don't know uh, on the i don't know if it let does it let you take the same guy and around like multiple people can take the same guy oh yeah you just yeah yeah, okay just can only use him once in the whole season then he's right well this is tory and then he's he's great at tory pines and you're getting third ahead of last year. <laughs> yeah. Third last year. Yeah. Exactly. And, and I think you're getting ahead of his game back. You mentioned that last week. So mm-hmm. uh, Day was also a guy that I bet top 20. The other the other guys I bet, uh, and look, this is a risk, but I think you're getting amazing odds for a guy like Johnny Vegas if he is healthy. Yeah. If Johnny Vegas is healthy, then those odds for a top 20 finish are fantastic. Yeah. The two guys that I targeted for top 20s. I targeted because they're top 10 in the field in strokes gain total, like overall, just gaining strokes overall in the field in the North course. So I'm all, and that's Gary Woodland and Harris English. Okay. So those guys pop when it comes to consistent strokes gained again, overall. And the thought process guys is simple. And Harry can you know speak to this a little deeper, which is you build yourself a buffer zone. You shoot 64 at the North you can shoot 71, 72 and still make the cut and still right. finish top 20. But you can't, like, you can't shoot 70, 
71 on the first day and expect to make the cut. Giving up a lot of shots to the field if you're playing the North early and and do not take advantage of it. There's no now they beefed it up a little bit. It's not as big of a, a dis- of an advantage like it used Fair. to be like two two and a half shots difference. <laughs> I think it's below two now, uh, but it's still it's easier than the South and they they only play the North once. So that day that you have it, whether it's today or tomorrow, you got to take advantage of it. All right, we'll be back on Friday unless you guys have anything else. We'll dive deeper into the player prop angles uh perhaps some of these numbers in the football game will move uh some more yeah touchdown scores the the whole bit and we'll probably know a little bit more about patrick mahomes and his high ankle sprain all right we'll be back on friday give us a like and a thumbs up